and my first signal is a copper penny. That's pretty good. I'm running. Uh, I'm running down a foil, and I'm looking for anything. Well, here we go. Another small hole after quite a search. Copper one thing for this trip so far. This is a rare occasion when a uh, nickel symbol signal off <laughs> actually turns out to be a nickel. Uh, I was looking, I was, uh, I'm in a crash area with uh, the large coil on my Tesoro Outlaw. So I was kind of expecting uh, square tabs here, but it's a nice surprise. Kind of surprising. This was sort of reading as a nickel, so I'm wondering, I'm wondering if there's something else in the hole that we need to be doing. But this is a dime. Usually a dime shots I'm reading so I'm wondering if there's anything else in it. Yeah, there's something else in here. That might explain why that dime was reading so weird. Well, this could explain, uh, because uh, now I've got a nickel, so i got a little mini coin spill here. <laughs> That's cool. Well, uh, according to the TRX, that's it. So, all right, a mini coin spill. <laughs> I was reading the nickel and getting a, what I thought would be a pool tab, and I get a dime and a nickel. That's cool. All right, uh, on to the next. Well, I gotta admit, I don't have much hope for this one. I couldn't get it to really, I couldn't get it to really detect until I drop my discrimination down to uh, to zinc, I mean up to zinc. So So I think there's a better than even chance we're looking at the zinc pin here. And we got a zinc penny from that hole. Well, without my glasses, my camera glasses, still haven't got quite got the knack. Oh, these one hand digs, but as bad as though my camera glasses were working, uh, it's got to be pretty bad to be worse than, uh, than that. Though I think I was getting a handle on it, so I'll be using them again. Great. A quarter. Not bad. This doesn't happen very often when you're in the suburbs metal detecting a coin ball. I don't know what that is. Could be a no, it's not a ring. I don't know, it looks like a nut maybe. Let's take a closer look at it later. <laughs> Look like a coin ball, in any case. There we go. Well, this is a high conductivity target here. Let's see. 
finally some earth is not hard as a rock. coin ball this time and it looks like I've got another quarter well it was a dime day the other day it looks like today might be a quarter day definitely an improvement over the dime day but there's another there's another quarter very shallow I've only got the TRX pointer right now set on uh, 2, level of 2 when it goes up to 4. Sometimes you get instability at 4, so I take it down to 3. And I was digging before, so I wanted to see how close I was to the target, so I took it down to 2. I probably have to bring it up again in a little while. Well, another dig, not 6 feet from the previous one. And, uh, and we got another quarter. Cool. Keep on moving. Well, let's try another live dig. Another high conductivity target. So far, it's been quarters, quarters, quarters. So. <clears throat> Have to get my glasses back. <laughs> There we go. It was standing on its edge when I dug it out. It fell on its edge. I couldn't see it. Another quarter. Cool. Well, here we go again. I gotta wonder if my determination is set so high that only five quarters. Here's another quarter. Cool. This is Texas Tiger Digs. Uh, I went out today, hit a couple of parks, and you see the results here. Uh, you know, quite a few, quite a few clad coins, and uh, you know, uh, the usual array, uh, array of junk. And uh, the two parks I hit is the uh, the old park, uh, the one where I found the two rings. I still go out there. And you know, I've, I'm, I'm pushing this theory that you can't ever hunt out a park. And I've tried to, uh, to see if I could do it with this one. I haven't yet succeeded. In fact, I found the, the larger of the two silver rings after really running at that park for a period of months. Uh, so, uh, so that pretty much proved that theory was correct that you really can't hunt a park out. But I went back to the park this time and I went back with the uh, with the uh, the Tesoro Outlaw and the uh, 10 by 12 coil uh, and there's had some interesting results so uh, this I went out I got a couple of nickels uh, a dime a penny and a very very crusty zinc uh, that's what I got out there and you know it's been a while since I got nickels 
And you know, I, I always grade myself on how many nickels I find. If I find nickels, then I know I've got my discrimination set correctly for gold and, you know, whatever else, other mid-tone targets. And I know that I've eliminated, even though I have a hundred to park out, I have, must have put a dent in the number of high-tone targets, quarters and dimes, etc. So I know that I, I'm going to have to be concentrating on mid-tone mid -tone targets, even though I did find a dime, and I believe this is... No, it may be zinc. Yes, zinc. Uh, though I did find this dime. Uh, so, and I found this bit of trash. I was I was uh, going after foil signals. So, and most of my foil signals were foil. And I got a high target off of this, and it is a screw cap. And I also got a high one off of this. And then, of course, my usual nickel tones is, you know, nine, eight times or nine times out of ten, my nickel tones are going to be these square tabs. So uh, that was a pretty good run, and uh, I found some things out about the uh, the Tesoro Outlaw. When I got that, I think I told you in one of my earlier videos, one of the one of the deciding factors was the array of coils I could get for a reasonable price. At around 500, 550, I can't remember exactly the exact price. I was able to get the Tesoro Outlaw, and I got a 10 by 12 coil, a 5 by 5 by 7, 5 inch coil, and an 8 inch uh, concentric coil. And I wanted that because my compadre in its modded form is is a Umax. It's always a Umax, but now it's a Umax that I can remove the cables from, so I could share the. Uh, I could share the uh, coils between the two devices. So that was a deciding factor. I did not decide completely on the fact that the uh, Outlaw is such a good detector. Now, I know it's Tesoro. I know Tesoro detectors, and I haven't found a bad Tesoro detector yet. I did have some issues a while back with the, the Cortez, but that's only because I really never took the time required to master it correctly. So now I know. Uh, yeah, it's been a while back, so it's been a while since I had the Cortez. But the the uh, Outlaw has got some had some great results. Uh, I went out with it into this new park using a a sizable coil. I was able to get uh, most of these coins from a trashy area. Now Tesoro had bragged, uh, and it looks like it has some foundation that did there. 10 by 12 coil because of its concentration along the central axis was still going to be graded target separation. I got to admit, they didn't lie. Not that I know to sorrow to lie. I just, you know, I just, I just never take anything at face value. Uh, so that was great. In fact, I think uh, I know both of these nickels were in trashy areas. Uh, this dime was in a trashy area, and I walked in and hit this one penny right away in a trashy area. And uh can't remember exactly where I got this from, but it, you know, but you know, most of my finds were in trashy areas with a large coil. So I like that. Now, taking that into consideration, uh there's another thing that makes the Tesoro good, uh the Tesoro Outlaw good, is the uh is the is the uh, all metal mode. Uh and I, every Every detector I can think of has a all metal or a, a all metal mode where you know it just goes off on all. Maybe with the exception of the AT Pro, which does not have a all metal mode. Uh, but uh, this is great, and you use this all metal mode for pinpointing and size. And the reason you use it so often is because there's so many ways to reach the all metal mode. You can do you can do this. You can turn your your discrimination all the way down. All metal. You can flip this switch to to either all metal, non-motion, all metal motion. So that's two ways to reach it. You can also hit the retune button in a certain way and it will take it it'll also go to all metal. So you've got three ways of reaching all metal. So 
it's always at your beck and call. So when you get a target, you get you get a discriminated discriminated target, and you run across it all metal. You can decide how big the target is and whether or not it needs to be dug up. So that's great. And uh, so I really got uh, no complaints about this, and I think I I made a better deal than I, the good deal I knew I'd made. In any case, uh, I went to the second park. Now I have been to this park once before, but I haven't really gone at it hard. And this time I went. Uh, admittedly, most of the time I was in a high discrimination, and I was testing something. And when I turned my discrimination all the way up, let me show you what I got. Let's move these aside. I got this, 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 this. What's special about those? They're all quarters. These quarters are very, very high conduct conductive targets. I didn't get dimes. And quarters and dimes are often linked together in, uh, in, a, uh, in the area in a VDI machine. And it's especially linked area in an analog machine because analog machines are by their nature and the turning of a dial usually not as accurate as the digital scale of a VDI machine. So by turning this all the way up, all I hit were quarters, and that was amazing. I turned it down a bit, and I got a scratchy signal, not too far down. I got a scratchy signal, and you know what I got? I got a copper penny. And then I got you know, a copper penny in other ways, but I had to turn it down. Of course, we know the copper pennies and dimes uh, are usually you know, virtually identical in, in any uh, VDI TID machine. So, uh, you know, that's not unusual. And I've gone out to this park and hit nothing but dimes before. But when I turned the discrimination all the way up, I hit quarter, 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 quarter. So there's a there's a space differentiating between quarters and dimes. Now I heard this on 53 silvers. Now I, not that I don't believe 53 silver, but I was it was amazed when I was able to prove it to myself inadvertently first, and then I realized, oh boy, I can actually differentiate between the values of two very high conductive conductive targets that are very very close in scale. That's great. And then I, for a while I ran with a low discrimination and I picked up some, you know, some square tabs, uh, pull tab rings, and I don't know what this is. It might be a lip balm container or something, but, you know, so that's what I got. Anyway, uh, that's basically uh, all I've got to say about this. And uh, I've, I've had a few questions about, you know, getting silver and everything and how... You know, the parks I'm working, uh, silver would be extraordinary because I'm not sure these parks were around much into the mid 80s. Uh, I'm not even sure the school existed on this area into the mid 80s. So these are young parks and then you find it in a lot of new suburbs. Now I'm not saying suburbs in the northeast or the north, though there are new suburbs. There are probably some suburbs that are, you know, a hundred years old so you can still find silver. So where I'm going now, I'm not going to find silver. And and the thing is, I really don't miss it. Now, I want to find silver, and I'm going to be going down to the central part of uh, my area to get it. But if I don't get silver and I'm up in my suburban areas, I still get to test my machine and to run my machines and to get my results. I'll get the silver when I go down to areas that are older. That, uh, In fact, my uh, I have a relative that lives in an area that used to be uh, the social spot where some of the richest people in Dallas lived. And there are several lots around there. And I think I can actually get some permissions down there. Now that is going to be very interesting. I know there are people are already down there. My cousin mentioned that as well. But, uh, you know, I think I can, uh, like you said, no place is hunted out. And uh, I think I'll get a shot at some places. Even my, even my, uh, even my cousin's front yard probably has some something interesting in it. Anyway, uh, that's all I've got. And uh, I'm too too chatty as usual. So uh, I'll uh, I will talk to you next time and at the next hunt. And uh, subscribe. You know, uh, like I said, I've got some new things coming. Uh, I've got some new things coming in the next four or five days. So. Uh, uh, it's, they're not earth shattering, but there's some very interesting things and things I think you will be interested in later. Uh, anyway, uh, this is Texas Tiger Diggs, and I'll talk to you later.